All right, so we're finally moving on to a new project here, and uh, this is, uh, is going to be our first hardwood project that we're we're going to be working on, and it's a it's a neat little project. What's neat about this little project is it's generally speaking usually a pretty fast one. Um, it's going to incorporate some some new tools, some new techniques, definitely some new uh, species of wood, and it's. It's, it's also a really good project uh, to use up scrap wood because it's small and, and we use different pieces. So it's, it kind of helps us clean the shop up too when we do this. So the purpose of this right here, so this is a, it's called a wine topper, at least that's what I call it. So if my, uh, my thumb right here was a bottle of wine, it goes over top of the bottle of wine and then you hang two wine glasses upside down off the side. And it's a nice little decoration piece that it really they look pretty good on the counter to be honest with you. I mean, you could take it on a picnic if you wanted, but most people just use them as some decoration on, on the counter. Sometimes people actually just put it over a thing of olive oil and uh, hang some other stuff off the side. It, it, it's whatever. Um, it's supposed to be for lions. Anyways, we're going to go over how to make this. We're going to talk about a few things here and, 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 and kind of jump on into it here. So I said that this was going to be our first project using hardwood. Do you know what the difference between a hardwood and a softwood tree is? Go ahead, give me your give me your guess. Hard like a hard tree or like hard wood hard tree? Well, uh, so there there are hardwood trees and there are softwood trees. There, there are different species of trees. Do you know what the difference would be between the two? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, one's hard and soft. Okay, one's hard, one's soft. That's what that's what most people agree. So what I'm actually gonna tell you is that there are some hardwoods that are softer than some softwoods. And there are some softwoods that are harder than hardwoods. That kind of seems like an oxymoron, doesn't it? So the real difference between a hardwood and a softwood tree is a softwood tree, like a fir, like a Douglas fir or a hemlock fir, all right, or a spruce, um, a, 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 a softwood tree is a needle bearing tree or a pine tree, all right? So it has needles on it, which is like your spruces and your firs and stuff like that. A hardwood tree does not have needles. What does it have? What do you think? It doesn't have ne needles on, on its branches. What does it have? Leaves. It has leaves, yeah. So a leaf-bearing tree is a hardwood tree. So that's that's the real difference. And there are some, like I said, there are some hardwoods that are actually softer than some softwoods. And there are some softwoods that are harder than some hardwoods. On it. There's all the hardness scale. Uh, anyways, we're, we're gonna talk about this. So, all of these trees right here are, are leaf bearing trees. And if we go over these, we're gonna talk about what kind of species we have. So this one over here, uh, this one is made out of uh, what we call a, uh, a tiger or a bird's eye or a soft maple. That's this white looking one. A lot of times they call it a curly maple. Um, when we order, it's called, uh, it's called a soft maple. A lot of people call it a tiger or a, or a curly maple. And it's got really nice, uh, really nice like curls kind of in, in the wood if you do it right. Now this over here, this this looks like black walnut, but it's actually not. It's it's a roasted poplar and it it's not as hard anywhere near as hard as, as, as the walnut, but it gives us the walnut type look at a price that's about a third of the cost of black walnut. Black walnut is a very gorgeous tree. Um, it's excellent, excellent qualities. You know, it's very beautiful, but it's very expensive. So we, we can't afford that here. So we cheat and we use roasted poplar because we're just using it for a little bit of off tint. If we look at this one over here, um, this one happens to be a, a blend of red oak. That's this orangish, brownish looking uh, pieces right here. These are red oak. And this in here happens to be white ash. Now. Both of them have what's called an exposed grain. So we can we can really see that grain, right? We can also feel that grain when we run our, our fingers over it, right? It's a very distinct grain. The, the white ash um, looks like a bleached version of the red oak. Do you know that red oak is the state tree here in New Jersey? It is, it's a state tree. Um, Red oak, it's a, oak's a very common wood to work with. Red oak is the most common. White oak is very hard. It is beautiful, but it's a real, it's a real nightmare to work with. It's just very challenging. It's hard on everything. Um, if we take a look at this over here, um, this one over here, it looks like we have used, this is white ash. 
And this right here is cherry, more specifically, it's called black cherry. Um, the black cherry is very uh, predominant in the Adirondack Mountains, but even more prominent in the northwest corner of uh, Pennsylvania, which is where uh, we have a really big uh, standing standing uh, forest of, of, of black cherry trees, and it's very good. It's a very uh, high quality wood, it looks very pretty. Um, this right here, you can see it's already oxidized, so it's got that nice, deep, rich uh, color. Since we're so close to, uh, to Pennsylvania, um, it's, it's, it's pretty affordable, to be honest with you here, um, around this section of the country. It's, it's actually pretty affordable, which is, uh, makes it a nice wood to use. If we take a look at this one over here, um, it looks like we kind of use a little bit of a smorgasbord here on this one. The centerpiece happens to be some uh, white ash. On the outside over here, well, this one looks like white ash. All right, so we did white ash, white ash, white ash. And believe it or not, does this in here kind of look like oak as well? It is. It's not red oak, it's it's white oak, okay? And it's what's, what's, what's really weird is, is the white oak is actually darker than, than the red oak, all right? This is a very dense wood to work with. It is pretty, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's very pretty wood. Um, it's very hard. It's something that we rarely work with anymore. I don't even think we really have any left, but it's it's just one of those woods that you know I wanted to show you. So anyways, <clears throat> there's really no wrong combination to use for these. Generally speaking, we just try to contrast colors, right? Like the white and the black. All right, the red and the white. All right, the red and the whitish tint. So we try to contrast some colors when we do them. So if we take a look at what we have over here, oftentimes we just get a bunch of milk crates and we'll put some, some different pieces in there. These pieces right here, one, two, and three, the big ones, these are an inch and a half wide. These smaller ones right here, these happen to be a half an inch wide. So as we find pieces of wood, we'll cut them, or I'm sorry, we'll rip them down the length and we'll cut them, but we're gonna talk a little bit about that here. So the, uh, the overall length of this here is gonna be uh, 12 inches, so all of our pieces will wind up being cut down to 12 inches. So we're probably gonna cut out of the video here, we're gonna go grab some milk crates, we're gonna grab some wood, and then when we cut back in, we're gonna go over how to do this. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do in order to start uh, getting this project ready is we've gathered up some scrap pieces, and uh, I've confirmed that we have a true edge on all of these scrap pieces here. Um, but we will, uh, we don't have to, but on some of them that have an angle, we'll go ahead and we'll probably cut them twice, uh, once to square up and then once to cut them down to our final length of 12 inches. Um, the rest of them, we'll just go ahead and, and cut them down because there's really no, the length's not too specific because we're gonna wind up uh, cutting them to a small angle. So I've got these kind of all laid out here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut them on the uh, chop saw here next. I've uh, got a stop set up over here at 12 inches and that's how long we wound up pieces. Um, I can see on this piece over here I got a, a blemish so I'm going to cut as much of the blemish off as possible. We're nice and tight to our back. We're going to go ahead and make a cut. All right, this piece here I can probably get a flower base out of later on so I'll save that. All right, that's fine. This piece here we're going to wind up packing a smidge off it. Obviously, we want to cut off our crappiest then. Hit that. 
this one, get a little angle. Next time we cut into the video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start ripping these things down. All right, so we've got a big old pile of this scrap here all cut down to uh, about 12 inches. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I happen to have this set up right now for these half inch uh, rippings that we need to do. And uh, the half inch rippings are really no fun to do because we have to take out our uh, anti-kickback guard and just put in our small uh, wedge here. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, start ripping down some of these pieces here and, and putting them into our uh, categories where they go, you know, the maple with the maple and the oak with the oak and the beech with the beech and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna rip a few of these down then I'll wind up uh, cutting out of the video and we'll cut back in and we'll start doing the, uh, the big one and a half inches. So as you can tell, I uh, went ahead and I ripped out some of these uh, small half inch pieces. And the ones I wanted to keep I left over here and the ones that were uh, un small or unacceptable I moved off to the side. And it looks like we did all oak here. So we're gonna put these in the, the oak box. I'm gonna go ahead and rip the rest of these down. When we cut back in, we're gonna do some of those uh, inch and a halfers. Stay all right, we got a bunch of those uh, little half inches to take care of here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Put our other guard in. Any of these that need a little bit of attention, I'm going to deal with. Um, some of these didn't quite fit, so if you see me set something off to the side, that's why. We're going to take as many inch and a half off of these here as we can, and then what we're going to do is uh, anything that's left, we'll run through with the, uh, the other half inch. We're going to do that right now.
take a look um, out of these particular two pieces right here uh, we weren't left with anything that we can get any more half inches out of but we were able to uh, to get quite a bit of these inch and a half pieces of maple and these uh, these will wind up being really nice pretty looking projects we're either going to pair these up with a uh, a roasted poplar which will look like the walnut or we'll do it with uh, some cherries it'll be uh, like a white and orange it'll turn out really sharp i'm not going to videotape me running down through all of them but i wanted to show you guys the uh, general gist here so that it makes sense here next time we put in we're going to show you a little bit more all right guys so i uh spent the last two days here ripping down a bunch of scraps that we had laying around the shop and i wanted to uh just kind of <clears throat> end the video with with showing you where we're kind of at with, with what we have and if we take a look i'm going to give you like a little bit of a behind the scenes type deal so all these crates over here are loaded with uh, different species so for example like this over here happens to be cherry and then we have the white ash the red oak uh, maple birch beech and hickory like I told you guys, we're gonna try to do like some contrasting colors. Like we might do something like uh, a piece of maple with two pieces of, of cherry because we can get you know, different color tones like a so. But we'll figure out how we want to do all of this, but I wanted to show you guys exactly where we're at and uh, it helps clean up the shop. Um, it gets us to a spot where um, we're gonna start doing some glue ups and stuff like that, which gets us into a new video, and we'll uh, we'll start getting the uh, you know the projects to this here. And, and one other thing I wanted to uh, show you guys with these here is this is actually um, this is the wood's natural uh, color. All they really have on it is uh, a boiled linseed oil, and that's just what the uh, what the wood kind of looks like when we put that oil on. And you can tell, you know, they have a very very nice color to them. I happen to like the way they look. They're a nice little project. So anyways, that's it for this video here. And uh, next time we have a video, I'm gonna be gluing them up.